Aloha, my dear siblings in Christ. Well, today is Monday, November 9th, 2020. Another day in the COVID-19 pandemic, a day when the number of infections, especially in the North American states, are increasing as more people die from the disease, the virus, as our own island home struggles with how best to open to visitors, but at the same time stay safe. As we worship together, still wearing masks and practicing social distancing and not singing to protect one another. But it's also a week after the election and a couple of days now after that it appears that Vice President Biden is the president-elect and Senator Harris is the vice president-elect. It's a time when we know that our nation is divided. We saw the maps, the reds and the blues. It's a time when we, as citizens, must insist that our leaders learn to govern together and that we learn to compromise, and that we not call one another names, that we not claim evil of the other. I, I say that because that's, as a citizen myself, that's the basis upon which our federal democratic republic rests. We're in difficult times. Uh, but you know, I was raised in Southern Illinois. My father's family came from Charleston where Abraham Lincoln's family uh, settled. My mother's family was from Attu and, and Olney in downstate Illinois. I was born in Decatur. So I was born in the land of Lincoln. And Abraham Lincoln has long, long been a personal hero. Now, now I know, I, I know he wasn't perfect. He lived in a racist time, and he was racist. The treating of indigenous peoples was harsh. The hanging of the Dakota warriors was wrong. But as I read Lincoln, I also saw that he grew as he came to see people of African descent as human beings, not just slaves that were a problem. And even as he replied to limit the number of hangings of the Dakota, the tragedies were real. But as you read Lincoln, particularly as you move through the 1860 to, to, his, to his assassination in 1865, you, you can read about his heart when you look at him. Now there's a meme out there that forced me to try to find something uh, that I knew I had read from Lincoln. You, you see, it, I, I don't know if you've seen the meme, but it has Vice President-elect Harris on the full and one side in color. And, and then a scattering of all of I assume all of the former vice presidents, all white men in black and white little photos to the side. And, and I remembered something that Lincoln had said, and I had to find it. It was a, a little speech, a short speech he gave on August 22nd, 1864. Yeah, I, I have my copy of my Lincoln's writings here. It took me a bit to find it. But he was a speech to the 166th Ohio Regiment. They were mustering out. They had served their time. So, so he wanted to say something to them. Now he turned to these soldiers who were preparing to go home. 
It is not merely for today, but for all time to come, that we should perpetuate for our children's children this great and free government which we have enjoyed all our lives. I beg you to remember this, not merely for my sake, but for yours. I happen temporarily to occupy this big White House. I am living witness that any one of your children may look to come here as my father's child has. It is in order that each of you may have, through this free government which we have enjoyed, an open field and a fair chance for your industry, enterprise, and intelligence, that you may have equal privileges in the race of life with all its desirable human aspirations. It is for this the struggle should be maintained that we may not lose our birthright not only for one, but for two or three years, the nation is worth fighting for to secure such an inestimable jewel. Now, he spoke those words, as I said, in August 1864. In other words, before the 1864 election that was taking place during the midst of a great civil war and that he had committed to obey the will of the people, whatever the outcome. But in it, I, the way he commented that anyone's son, now remember then it was son and it meant free white men, anyone's son could aspire to the White House. So when I saw Vice President-elect Harris in that meme, I was reminded that anyone's son or daughter, anyone's grandson or granddaughter could aspire and finally envision being of service to the nation. Now it became all the more poignant for me, secondly, because of my own granddaughter. I had just talked with her and all of her five months with her mother in Estonia. And as I looked at little Lee San and then I later looked at the meme, it dawned on me, now here was a little girl whose mother was born in Estonia and whose grandparents were born in Estonia and whose great-grandparents were born in Estonia but whose father was born in New Jersey and whose father was born in Illinois to a family that had ended up in Virginia in the early, early 1700s with a mother whose parents came from Mexico and whose father's family didn't even speak Spanish but spoke an indigenous language of southern Mexico. That anyone can aspire. Now that's a promise. That's a secular promise. That's a civic promise. That's a myth of the United States. Now all nations have myths. We have some myths that aren't very helpful. that notion of manifest destiny uh, that allowed the United States to expand and steal indigenous lands and to subjugate peoples is part of our myth that we have to wash away and relearn in new ways. born of the doctrine of discovery that convinced Europeans that they were better, that they could impose on others, that they could create slavery based upon race, that they could steal 
the labor of others, and more importantly, that endemic racism could continue in the United States based upon white privilege. That's part of our myth too. See, no nation, even a nation that claims to be under God, and I'm perfectly fine with the motto, one nation under God, but it means that if we are one nation under God, we have to continually to reflect ourselves upon what that means. Continually. Now, the day before he spoke to the Ohio 166th, he spoke to the Ohio uh, six, uh, uh, Ohio six, uh, 164th Regiment. Got to get my Ohio regiments right. They must have all been mustering out at the same time. Now in it he writes, he wrote, he spoke to them, and here I have before me. Lincoln said, we have, as all will agree, a free government, where every man has a right to be equal with every other man. In this struggle, this form of government and every form of human right is endangered if our enemies succeed. There is more involved in this contest than is realized by everyone. There is involved in this struggle the question of whether your children and my children shall enjoy the privileges we have enjoyed. I say this in order to impress upon you, if you are not already so impressed, that no small matter should divert us from our great purpose. So a myth of a nation, a myth that there is a place for all of God's children, regardless of their race, regardless of sex, regardless of sexual orientation, regardless of their religion, a promise, unfulfilled, but I think one grounded in the kingdom of God. So as Christians, where does that leave us as we continue to reflect? Uh, first, I want to ask every church to continue to pray by name for President Trump and Vice President Pence. And also to begin to pray for President-elect Biden and Vice President-elect Harris. By name, both. Both sets. Now, I'm quite fond of wisdom literature, you may have noticed that, from Scripture, and particularly something from the Apocrypha. Uh, it's called Ecclesiasticus. Uh, it's also caused, called the wisdom of Jesus ben Sirach, or just Sirach. Now, Ecclesiasticus is the name that's given in the Latin translation of Holy Scripture uh, before it was codified in a way by the rabbis. And it's what early Christians would have read as their scripture in the Septuagint. Uh, Sirach was a Jewish rabbi. Uh, goes without saying, he was a rabbi. Uh, but probably in the second century before the birth of Jesus. And at the end of chapter 9 and in chapter 10, he offers some guidance about what it means to be a ruler and a people. A reading from Ecclesiasticus, chapter 9, beginning at verse 17, through chapter 10 at verse 12. A handicraft is praised because of the craftsman's skill, and the one who leads a people is wise in speech. Talkative people are feared in their city, and people who are reckless in speech will be halted and hated. 
Wise judges will instruct their people, and an intelligent person's rule will be orderly. As the people's judges are, so will their officials be, and as the ruler of a city is, so also all of its inhabitants. An uneducated king will ruin his people, and a city is founded on the intelligence of its rulers. Authority over the earth belongs to the Lord, and he will identify the person who is right for the time. A people's success belongs to the Lord, and he will glory to the legal expert. Don't become angry with your neighbor, neighbor over every wrong. Don't do anything that offers flagrant insult. Arrogance is hateful to God and people, and injustice is wrong to both. Sovereignty passes from nation to nation because of injustice, pride, and money. How can dust and ashes be arrogant even when they are alive, human bodies are decaying? A long illness mocks a doctor. Today's king will die tomorrow. When people are dead, they inherit maggots, vermin, and worms. Human arrogance begins when people rebel against God and their hearts rebel against the one who made them. Some calming words about how to be realistic about rulers. And as I've done before, let me share with you the words from the letter of James. Chapter 3, verses 13 to 18. Are any of you wise and understanding? Show that your actions are good with a humble lifestyle that comes from wisdom. However, if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, then stop bragging and living in ways that deny the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above. Instead, it is from the earth, natural and demonic. Wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there is disorder and everything that is evil. What of the wisdom from above? First it is pure, then peaceful, gentle, obedient, filled with mercy and good actions, fair and genuine. Those who make peace sow the seeds of justice by their peaceful actions. So with those words in mind, we will pray. We will pray for the president and we'll pray for the president-elect. We will banish anger from our hearts and harsh words from our lips with generosity we will listen because you and I know that as the children of a loving God every person every person shows us the face of God we must seek out the face of God as we heal the wounds of our nation as we care for those who are sick and dying, and as we seek to rebuild trust, trust in one another, trust in those in authority, and build upon our trust in a loving God. So with prayers from the prayer book, on page 220, say 820. Prayer for our country and for the President of the United States and all those in civil authority. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. 
Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and, and arrogance, and from every evil. Defend our liberties and fashion us into one united people that multi multitudes brought thither out of many kindreds and tongues. Endue with the spirit of wisdom those to whom thy name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to thy law we may show forth thy praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble suffer not our trust in thee to fail. All of which we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, our Governor, whose mercy is in all the world, we commend this nation to thy merciful care, that being guided by thy providence, we may dwell secure in thy peace. Grant to the President of the United States and to the President-elect, the Governor of this state, the mayors and the mayors-elect of the counties, and to all in authority, wisdom and strength to know and to do thy will. Fill them with the love of truth and righteousness, and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve this people in thy fear. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Whatever the days ahead hold, please know, my dear siblings in Christ, you are loved by God and that I love you as your bishop, and I pray for you every day, please pray for me. Aloha.